One commonly held belief in Christianity is the idea of hell as a place of unending torment. But this idea about hell should be rejected because it vilifies God, it ruins the gospel message, and it's not well supported in the Bible. Most Christians I know don't want to believe in this place of unending torment. They open the Bible and they see the word hell, which automatically conjures up images of people being tormented forever in flames. The Bible certainly says the word hell, but what I want to show you in this video is that the word hell does not signify unending torment. And that unending torment actually contradicts the clear Bible teaching about the destiny of the wicked. The first question that comes up is, if this idea about hell is not well supported in the Bible, then how did it become such a widespread belief in Christianity? It's a little bit hard to trace. But the earliest Christian writings, the Apostolic Fathers, do not mention the idea of hell as a place of unending torment. That being said, the idea did develop fairly early in Christianity. We have writings from the Church Fathers in the second century that discuss the idea of hell as unending torment. And this ended up becoming the majority view, but Throughout Christian history, there have always been Christians and Christian theologians who rejected this view of hell. And the idea of hell has never been central or essential to the Christian faith. My evidence for this is the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed was written in the fourth century, and it was supposed to express the essential truths of the Christian faith in one statement. The Nicene Creed has now been around for 1,700 years, and it is still accepted today by Catholic Christians, Orthodox Christians, and Protestant Christians as an expression of the essential truths of the Christian faith. So what does the Nicene Creed say about hell? Absolutely nothing. The Nicene Creed doesn't mention hell. But the Nicene Creed mentions the resurrection from the dead, the judgment, God's kingdom, and the eternal life to come. These are the essential truths of the Christian faith. The Bible is clear that there will be a resurrection from the dead, there will be a judgment, and God's people will live with him eternally. And what will happen to the wicked? They will be destroyed, they will die. This is the clear teaching throughout the Bible. And here are some verses that express this from the Old Testament. Psalm 1-6, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Psalm 92-7, Though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. Malachi 4-1, all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire. Not a root or branch will be left to them. Isaiah 1.28 But rebels and sinners will both be broken, and those who forsake the Lord will perish. The clear idea is that the destiny of the wicked is death, it's destruction. There's no hint of anything that resembles unending torment. And there are many more verses like this throughout the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament. In the New Testament, I found more than 50 verses that express the punishment of the wicked as death. Here are a few of them. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. James 5.20, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death. 2 Thessalonians 2.10, speaking of the wicked, they perish 
because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. 2 Peter 3, 7, by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. That's just a few of many similar verses that describe the destiny of the wicked as death, not as unending torment. But what about all the verses that talk about hell? When we open up the Bible and see the word hell, it does automatically conjure up the idea of unending torment. But was that the original meaning of the word? Or is that just popular ideas that have been passed on and have become part of the collective conscience of Christianity? The word in the New Testament that is translated as hell is actually the name of a place. It's Gehenna, literally the Valley of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom was a place near Jerusalem that became symbolic of God's final judgment. But when Jesus used this word, Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom, it does not carry the idea of unending torment the way that the word hell in English has come to mean for us. Jesus is certainly threatening the wicked with death by fire, but he isn't threatening them with continued torment. But Jesus does use some jarring imagery in his descriptions of the people who will not enter the kingdom of God. So let's examine Jesus' statements to see if they convey the idea of unending torment. Mark 9 47 says, And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Some read this and say that the fire is not quenched and that means keep people keep burning forever and ever. But that's ridiculous. The statement says that the fire doesn't go out. It doesn't say that the people keep burning. Jesus is threatening people with death by fire, but not continued burning for eternity. What about the idea of the worms that eat them do not die. Some people read this and think of worms tormenting people forever. But is that really the plain meaning or is that creative thought? Worms normally feed on dead things, not living things. The worms don't die because they have plenty of dead bodies to feed on. Certainly a horrible image of death but not the idea of unending torment. These are dead bodies that the fire burns and that the worms eat up. And further proof that Jesus is describing what happens after death is that this quote, this statement that he makes about the unquenchable fire and the worms that don't die is actually a quote from the book of Isaiah. And that, that verse says, And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die, and the fire that burns them will not be quenched. Dead bodies will, of the wicked will be eaten by worms and burned up in fire. This does not mean people burning alive forever or people being eaten alive by worms. Let's look at another frightful statement that Jesus makes. Matthew 13, 40 through 42 says, This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus makes several references to weeping and gnashing of teeth. And some people have made this idea into uh, 
never ending agony that where people are weeping and gnashing teeth forever and they're in incredible pain. But there's nothing eternal or ongoing about this idea of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth simply expresses that when people realize that they're not going to be in God's kingdom and they're about to be destroyed, they're going to be extremely sad and extremely angry. And this is the idea that the weeping of gnash and gnashing of teeth expresses. It has nothing to do with agony that goes on and on forever. At least that cannot be said from the context. None of Jesus' statements about hell give the idea of unending torment. They're simply death threats. But Jesus does make some statements that refer to differing degrees of punishment for certain people. For example, in Luke 20, 47, Jesus says, Beware of the teachers of the law. They devour widows' houses and for show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. I found eight statements that Jesus made that seem to show that there are different levels of punishment for the wicked. But nothing in Jesus' statements give the idea that people will be tortured forever. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man is in agony in fire, but there's no indication that his agony is going to last forever. So where did this idea of hell as never-ending torment come from, and why has it been perpetuated for so long? Well, it seems to come from three places. First, there are a few Jewish writings in the centuries prior to Jesus that seem to develop the idea of continuing torment after death. These writings are not part of the Jewish canon of scripture, but they may have been influential and in one of the initial sources of the idea of unending torment. Second, early Christians were deeply influenced by Greek philosophy People like Socrates and Plato had developed ideas about the immortality of the soul. The biblical idea about humanity is that humans are mortal, but we are being offered immortality through the life of Jesus Christ. But the idea from coming from Greek philosophy was different. In Greek philosophy at that time period, the idea was the human body was mortal, but the soul was immortal. So early Christians who had um, been shaped by this idea that the human soul is immortal naturally felt that souls would continue to remain alive after judgment. And this may have been where this idea developed in Christianity. And the third place this idea may have come from are from two interesting passages in the book of Revelation that do describe torment for people who have worshipped the beast. And so these verses are they can, they allude to, and they can be used to support the idea of unending torment. But Revelation is a vision that is filled with highly symbolic and metaphorical language. We should not take two verses from this apocalyptic writing and then disregard hundreds of teachings from other verses of scripture. There are many verses that describe the fate of the wicked as death, total destruction. So we should not reinterpret the abundance of clear verses in order to explain two verses that 
may have been completely metaphorical and highly symbolic in the book of Revelation. The clear teaching of scripture is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Shall not perish, shall not die. This does not say whoever believes in him shall not burn in hell forever. And if you think about it, if people are burning in hell forever, if they're conscious, that means they're alive. So it might be a miserable existence, but it would be eternal life. So that would directly contradict the multitude of scripture that contrasts eternal life in Christ with mortal death. Life versus death is the consistent message of the Bible. If there was this horrible place of unending torment, why didn't the Apostle Paul mention it in any of the 13 books that he wrote of the New Testament? Why didn't the apostles preach about this? In the book of Acts, we have records of their evangelistic sermons. Why aren't they preaching that people needed to avoid this place of unending torment? It's not mentioned at all. What were they preaching? They were preaching new life in Christ, eternal life, entering the kingdom of God and, and the resurrection of the dead. So these are the truths of the Christian faith. This is the gospel message. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that is good news. And it brings us to discussing why this topic is so incredibly important and why I believe Christians should seriously think about disposing of this whole idea of hell as unending torment. We've already seen that unending torment is not the plain teaching of scripture regarding the destiny of the wicked. But please also consider what the doctrine of unending torment does to the character of God and to the gospel. The gospel is that it's supposed to be good news for the world. It's that God loves you so much that he died on the cross to provide you with eternal life. With this doctrine of unending torment, it turns the gospel into horrible news. Instead it's of being this loving God, it's this tyrannical ruler who's offering a sadistic ultimatum. Believe in me or I will torture you forever. It's really hard to reconcile the idea of hell as a place of unending torment with a God who is loving and just. The justice of God is that he is ready to justly judge the wicked, but God desires none to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Here is the biblical idea of justice. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the gospel. This is the justice of God, that though we deserved death, God is offering life to ungodly and wicked people. And we have that life in Christ. It's death versus life. Thanks for watching this video. I have to say that in order to cover every aspect of this topic of hell, I would have needed to make this video about three hours long. And so I just wasn't able to cover everything. Um, I hope that you have, if you have a question, something that I didn't get to in this discussion, or if you have an objection, 
or just something you want to add to the conversation, please leave a comment in the comment section of this video. Thank you so much. God bless you.